But then we get over here to point two. Now point two is a tolerance that we would use for racing standards. Now what does that mean? That's 28.4, remember that is our total amount of grams in an ounce, times two or point two. And just for what it's worth, in this particular application, that means it would be approximately 1.5 grams left residually in the crank. You can do better, but it's a form of entertainment. Now let's move on and talk about the purple cat eyes. These are strictly for your drills. Again, you'll find it's very simple to access controls. We can select drill size. We can do that from either side. We can basically uh, turn on the drill point compensation or turn it off. We can select sizes, and as we check, select sizes, remember that it will change the depth based on the data that we have here from the grams. The last thing that we really want to pay attention to is that we have the force button. Now the force, when I touch it, I call this the Cyclops screen, and this is for single plane activity, but basically all the color codes that you see here are still applicable to what we did before. And you can close this just by touching close and you're back to your main screen. The next thing we would do is that we want to also, you see a remove button. Right now you see they're blue, and that stands for uh, removal. And you'll see the drills are in place. So as soon as I touch add, it goes yellow. And we're giving you a caution here saying that you're not going to remove weight, you're going to add weight. And you can see I've dropped out any drilling just to give you a little additional cue so that you don't continue by drilling. By the way, that's the part that if you do, you're really going to get frustrated. You're probably going to call me up and call me names. The problem is, is that you have gone and worked in a ad situation and you're continuing to drill. So we gave you all the visual cues, so just pay attention. Yellow means to add weight. Blue is to remove weight. Down here on the right, you have your bob weight. All right, now bob weight basically will tie into the scale, and we're going to get into that just shortly. And then the last thing we have here is, for you guys that work in the middle of the night, can't figure anything out, you've got your manual. And it's all set up in a PDF format so that you can go through and just read the instructions because you forgot what I taught you. At the end of the last three pages, we'll show you, for instance, here's a Chevrolet V6 2.3, uses a 40% formula, and gets 100 as a 90 degree V. Let's go on down here and let's just pick a Dodge Chrysler V8 340. Yes means, and you don't see it yet, but it means that it's externally balanced and it uses a 50% formula. So you can select the different types of engine. There's your Fords, here's a Nissan, a Lincoln, there's something you see a lot, uh, GMC V6s. So we have, this thing is always being updated, so you'll get this from us in uh, sort of quarterly mailings. Alright, so to get rid of this, just touch the red X and you're back to the main screen. The last thing on the screen that we will talk about, though, is that little green R. The green R is refresh. In other words, you've seen this on normal Windows setups, and if I wanted to come back and just check everything, I'd hit refresh, and it just resets everything back to zero for us. When you're closing out, there's exit. So when we hit exit, it's going to drop the program and send you back to a normal Windows format. Let's move on to weighing the rods. Alright, what we're going to do now is we're going to go into a real-time deal because we just put the time up on the clock. So I'm going to just start here by touching the screen and you notice that it opens up a blank bob weight card. Now we can go ahead and put any additional information in here. For instance, if I wanted to sit there and call this a 302P, uh, what the heck, we just put that in there. You can see you can put any designate. But what we're going to do is we're going to start weighing the rod big end. And the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to touch this W which opens the sub card that allows me to come over to the scale, we zero it to ensure that it is sitting at zero, then we're going to grab hold of our first connecting rod, and by the way, lay them out one through eight, just go ahead and hang it, let it stabilize for a second, hit print, and you'll notice that it's just imported the big end weight. Now I'm going to take the rod and lay it down as a hole, let it stabilize, and there we go. We've got the first rod done. do the same thing in succession here for all the rods. Rather than just make a short clip, we're going to show you exactly how long it takes. 
the next thing you're going to notice is as I'm doing this, the computer's going to start sampling and telling us which part is lighter. For instance, you can see now the number two little end is the lightest part. And now we're going on to number three. There we go. Now you see the big end on number three is lighter. So we're just going to go right down this whole pattern here, and it just takes just a minute or so. It really doesn't take very long at all. Let it stabilize. Grant, there we go. Stabilize. The reason we put them in numbering from 1 through 8 is so, as is reported to the card, we're logging in the data. And this way we can come back and review it later to do the actual corrections. So you do not have to make the correction prior to building your bob weight. A word of caution. If you get sloppy and you lower that bob weight, then you've got a little bit of an issue. So we're going to assume that you're going to pay attention and get these plates all logged in and you're not going to bust that window. While I'm weighing, though, let's understand that the rod has a tolerance, or the piston, or the pin, either way you want to look at it, and it's called a plus or minus. Depending upon the level of performance, it will dictate how close you bring that. You get to set that standard. For instance, if I was talking about a grocery getter, plus or minus a gram, absolutely accept acceptable. And we're not worried about it because it's not a high RPM motor. But then as we start to move more into the performance area, we're going to come in and lower that. We might make it plus or minus a half gram. Now, what does that really mean? That really means that, for instance, if we were talking about plus or minus a half gram, that's one gram total. Right now, we have all the weights, and you'll see 392 is the lightest on the big end, 168 on the big end is now zero and zero until I hit send and it took the lightest numbers and put it on that card and I'm going to close it. Now what we're going to do is go to the insert. We're going to go and grab two inserts, just lay them on there, hit print, and we can go ahead and send that or at the same time I can log in the part number. Now in this particular case I'm just going to log in as one, two, three, four. Just to show you how simple it is and then we'll hit send. Now you can see right over here, let me move this out of the way, you can see that the send has allowed the 37 to move from here over. Alright, now we're going to come down rods. There's two journals, excuse me, two rod ends on one journal. So we put in two. As a V6 single throw, we would put one. Then we come to oil. We're going to just plug in, and for now, we're just going to say four, and we'll discuss this a little bit later. Move over here to pistons. Well, we're in pistons now. And again, we've laid them out. I'm going to take my bearings off. I'm going to ensure my scale is at zero. And again, I've laid the pistons out in order, so we're going to say one, and we're going to hit enter, logs it in. Oops, sorry, there we go, print. Then I'm going to come in with number two, log it in. Number three. Four. Now, in most cases, what we do is we get a like a sharpie pen or whatever, and we will put on the bottom of the piston the number. So this way, we don't worry about how they're laid out. We can't come back and recall. Now, we're also doing this independent of the pen. Some people just keep them together and they call it a day. Well, that's fine, except that there are going to be variables. Now we've already found the variable in the piston, so now we have the complete set. Again, I can put the part number in if I want to, and I can send it into the history file. We'll talk about that in a minute. We'll send this over and close it, and you can see there's the data. We could also go over here and put the piston manufacturer. It could be a JE, it could be a Badger, it could be whoever, but you can record all that data.